speaking of circuit python we're going to do our python on hardware newsletter yeah. highlights and more well this week you know it's it's all python on hardware and so we have a few different things we're going to talk about um i'm going to save this for part two of our little chatter here because someone in the chat said what do you how do you feel about arm um any thoughts about arm investing in raspberry Pi?" that was in our newsletter this week we we have kind of an industry newsletter i think now if it's anything to do with things that python runs on we also cover it of course the raspberry it's well Pi. it's relevant definitely Super relevant. yeah so if you if you follow the chip news you know um arm acquired a minority stake in raspberry pi um, that was announced last week, strategic investment in Raspberry Pi Limited, the arm of the Raspberry Pi responsible for the new Raspberry Pi 5 and past Raspberry Pi 5 products. So if you think about it, it's kind of interesting. So Sony is involved with Raspberry Pi. Yes, they already have a minority stake. Because arm, they do the manufacturing arm, in Wales. Arm is involved. Yeah. And then the quote says um, here, this is kind of interesting. Uh, the investment financial terms of which has not been made public comes a month after Upton spoke of interest floating the firm of London Stock Exchange at a $500 million valuation. And seven uh, months after Sony, which runs the Walsh production facility, which makes many of the Raspberry Pi boards, uh, made its own minority investment in Raspberry Pi. And this is another one where, um, you know, you can see we linked to this if you want to see um, what uh, what stuff we got there. So, um, you know, Lady Ada, what do you what do you think about this? Well, you're you're not you're you're not an analyst, but but you would be considered one if you started to go on like Mad Money. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Bye, sell. Some buttons. Yeah. Uh, burp, burp, burp. yeah, Raspberry Pi button. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, I, you know, I first off, it's smart of ARM, right? I mean, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, Eben did an uh, interview and he said, you know, the RP1 chip that they put on every Raspberry Pi, um, every Pi 5, you know, they spent, I think he said, $15 million in development. It's a custom chip. And the RP2040 also acquired um you know custom it's a custom chip manufacturing that uses arm core and um, i'm assuming the rp20 rp1 also of course is arm core um and so they went from you know basically giving the money to um a chip vendor to giving it to a chip licensing vendor so it's smart for arm to to come in and say hey you know i want you to um i want to own a piece of this because uh they are a driver of the technology um Raspberry Pi computers and you know compute modules are used heavily in industry, uh, and they are kind of the best in the market. I I don't really see. Yes, there are maybe Raspberry Pi killers that are are faster and cheaper, but none of them are overall as good of an experience. Um, you know, and the Raspberry Pi is is solid. It's 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 consistent. Um, it survived a part shortage. It's still in high demand, which is why we're putting them in as we speak. Them. And I think you know I don't know you know usually. I don't want to, you know, I'm not speaking for Raspberry Pi, but if I was Raspberry Pi, I would say, look, Arm, you can invest in us, but that doesn't restrict us from using different chipset instruction sets in the future. And I would think that would be wise of Eben, even though Arm, of course, is a, is a British, uh, I, don't think it's, I don't know if it's a British company anymore, uh, it's owned by SoftBank, I think, but it was started in, you know, England and so, or in Cambridge, and so he's probably near and dear to his heart. Um, but you know, they, they want also be interested in looking into the future. There are other chips that can be interesting that said arm has money and they have incentive to, um, have the RP 2040 succeed, having the RP one succeed. Now they have, they have incentive to provide good licensing terms to provide support since now Raspberry Pi is a Silicon vendor. Uh, I think it's wise. I mean, I would, you know, do the same if, if, uh, if I was a chip licensee. And a licensor was doing quite well. I would, um, you know, this this way they're both invested in each other's success. Okay. And then um, other news, because um, we're going to bounce around. So you know, our newsletter has a little bit of everything. Um, I'm going to go to the Risk Five stuff in a second. It was an interesting post. That's um, a follow up to the Beagle Bone mm -hmm. coming out. Um, but check out the rest of the newsletter. It's spam free. We have a separate site. You don't have to worry about anyone sending you other things or sales stuff in the mail. We don't, this isn't tied to your shopping account or anything. It's Adafruit Daily, completely separate site because we hate spam probably even more than you do. Um, but one thing that's interesting because we made some badges a long time ago. Um, Girl Scout has maker badges. They teamed up with Black & Decker and there's neat ones for um, folks who want to show that they've made something 
in the maker world, uh, and they happen to be in Girl Scouts. Um, the official Raspberry Pi beginner guide, fifth edition is out, and you can just check out all of the different things that's going on in the world of Raspberry Pi. We have projects of the week. We've got all the things that you can do with our stuff. We've got all the things you can do with our partners and resellers that we have, like Pi Maroni. There's a little bit of everything, anything that you can possibly imagine to build. Lots of signs and displays, lots of ways to get Internet of Things devices going. It is unending. Um, doom scrolling is the thing, but this is joy scrolling. Yes, it <laughs> because it's all words. it's all fun and good stuff. Um, GitHub Universe happened today. Apparently, you won an award. We're going to find out more about that. Congratulations, Lydia. Yay, thanks. Um, but um, the other part that we wanted to talk about, because we have our INMPI tonight, and it's the Beagle Bone. Um, uh, five fire. Yeah. Um, be beagle one V. No, it's a big. It's a beagle five fire. Beagle five. Okay. Yeah, because it's risk five. That's five. Um. Okay. So, there's a new single board computing on the computer computing module on the block. It's the beagle bone, and, um, interesting enough, Bunny, who's kind of our, you know, like avatar almost of like the. The open source. He's a mascot. The open I source. Imagine him in like a panda outfit, and he's yeah. got a sign, and the... he's like, "Risk five, risk five. Yeah. Five. Or yeah. Well, I think he, he had his book. He had he was the other bunny character. Yeah. It's bunny. Sorry, it's a rabbit. Yeah. yeah. Not a panda. Um, Sorry, bunny. So, um, bunny has an open letter because there seems to be some proposals from U.S. lawmakers to restrict Americans working on risk five. And the reason is because they don't want China to have dominance in that ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, actually, us, in, while in, I was in, researching the polar flag, because I was wondering, you know, like, what, you know, what, what does this come from? So, um, you know, arm. I'll say a lot of this is gossip, and so it's it's unsourced, and I'm I'm going by I'm, I'm repeating d gossip of gossip. Is that traditionally, you know, risk. Sorry, ARM has charged one to two dollars per chip, or sorry, one to two percent of the cost of a chip as licensing fees. Um, so you know, which is a reasonable amount, but they're start. You know, they they are owned by SoftBank, and they're kind of, ARM is sort of interested. Like, well, we should be making more money. Um, you know, we our chips are powering Apple and and Qualcomm and um, the you know the biggest Marvell and and MediaTek and the biggest chip manufacturers and they're making billions and we're not making billions and why aren't we making billions and so they are kind of trying to up their prices and they actually went to some of the um chinese uh, uh chip manufacturing companies and said hey we were we, how do you guys feel about upping the prices and the, their companies are like well we're not into that at all actually um and i was like wait but you're like well i thought you'd be into giving us more money um why aren't you not and so there's kind of this little bit of argument right now because I think a lot of these companies um, signed in for a certain percentage. And now like ARM wants a higher percentage or they want a percentage of the full device, not just the chip. I don't I don't know that of course is all under NDA. So nobody knows the exact details of what they're asking. But um, the the upshot is is that, you know, this is kind of pushing more Chinese silicon vendors towards like, well, you know, for this much money, why don't we just retool? And use Risk Five, and you're seeing more Risk Five development happening. Um, like Espressif has moved; you know, their latest chips are moved from uh, the C6, for example, has moved from Ten Silica to Risk Five. Um, and we're seeing also, like you know, we'll show this Polar Fire chip is what normally would be an, an ARM core, a powerful ARM core on the previous BeagleBone, um, BeagleBoard, Bo BeagleBoard, and BeagleBone boards. Blah blah blah. Uh, they were all ARM Cortex A8s, and now they're, you know, maybe moving to risk five. So I think that there's like a combo here of ARM is trying to push for higher licensing fees, and risk five is getting much more mature. Um, so risk five is, is becoming a more um, aggressive and um, delectable target for chip vendors. Yeah. So Bunny has a blog post. You can just search for. Bunny blog, B U N N I blog, bunnystudios.com is the first post. And Bunny has a letter that he wrote to the Gov and has a little bit about Bunny, why RISC V is important, why um, maybe we shouldn't restrict uh, Americans working on it, and maybe we can do something else, which is make some of these chips here. 
um, if it's a technology that's so critical to lots of things ahead, um, you know, you can invest in making chips. So yeah. um, we'll see how it goes. Um, it's interesting. There's a lot of intersection between, you know, geopolitical stuff right now and technology. So we're watching. It's another thing that runs <laughs> Python in some way. You know, we've got this BeagleBone um, that we were talking about from the newsletter um, this week. So, you know, it is here. It is interesting. This is probably the most interesting time to be doing electronics ever. Um, and tonight on INFI, yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, the new... Um, yeah, Polar fire. Yes, interesting. Check this out. So... That is this week's Python on Hardware news. You can get the newsletter delivered every single week. We'll go over to adafruitdaily.com. Don't forget, you can just look at it as a blog post. You can get an RSS feed. You can look at it on GitHub. We make it super easy to access the information the way you want it at all times. Um, it was interesting. I mean, I just want to follow up because yeah. you know, we chatted about some people like, well, what does this have? You know, what does that have to do with Python hardware? Um, but as we saw with the RP2040, which is an ARM core chip, you know, a lot of it was designed for um, running Python on hardware. Like a lot of the choices that were made were, um, okay, if you're going to be using a interpreted language like Python, make sure it has a lot of RAM, make sure that um, you have stuff like PIO that can do um, very timing critical stuff um, that, that is easily configurable and, and can change around. Um, um, you know, make sure that everything is well documented and, and you know, doesn't require um, assembly code. Um, you know, you can use a higher level language to access it. And I think that's that's part of, as we're seeing maybe ARM trend, you know, chips come translate to RISC-V, you know, if you were using ARM specific libraries and instruction sets, ah, that sucks because now you have to port it to, you know, RISC-V, you're using Synthesis. But if you're using Python on hardware, um, you may not need to do that much work at all because um, the code is going to be identical because it's on it's a it's one level higher than the RTOS even. 